do the butt. Seems that with all the review videos, all we ever do is either write the name of the pen or talk about how fast that fox jumps over the lazy dog. Let's see what else you can use them for. Maybe you could finish off that novel you've been working on for all those years and what, what is going on? Red rum. Is that still wet? Oh my God. It's actually what one of our viewers did. Uh, Mr. Ron E. Spots. He didn't write just one book. He wrote two, three, four books, all with a fountain pen. Ron connected with me through watching the channel and we got to talking through emails and told me a little bit about his life and Fortunately, he lost his wife way too early to cancer and became a single dad raising his two girls together. And one day he mentioned he had nothing to do, sitting around the house, found a fountain pen. There was a couple of noodlers and Ahab and a Conrad kicking around, cleaned them out, inked them up, and got to writing. And a few months later, had the first book in this series. His favorite pen to use is a noodler's Conrad in Ebonite because he loves the feel and it's a great writing nib, he says. He's uh, written the books himself and then worked with his daughter to create the book covers using fountain pens, of course, and then pencils and some markers, and then eventually transferring them to a digital copy to make the book covers. He considers his books to be a sci-fi fantasy theme, and they follow Fred and his family from a dystopian future of alien-ruled Earth to the far reaches of space, finding another alien race that helped the people of Earth avoid certain death more than 12,000 years ago, Here's his information here. You can find him on Facebook. I'll have some links down below as well. And uh, on Instagram, his daughter Jessica runs that with Inkspots99. And of course, featuring his cat, Darth Kittius. If you're going to write with the pens anyways, maybe give your crack at being an author like Ron did. Check out his stuff if you want to support him. And uh, let's see what else we got going on with the pens today. Keeping with form with my channel, you know I always like to test things and check things out for myself. One of which was architect nib. So this nib here, this is a fine architect nib and I got one to try it out. And I remember reading that people saying that architect nibs are really good for Arabic style characters where I thought, well, let's test that out as well. So to help out, I turned to a friend of mine. He's originally from Iran. So he speaks Farsi, which uses the same characters, but actually uh, Farsi has 32 characters versus 28. So all the merrier. I gave him three pins to try out one of which has a fine architect nib. The other one has a medium cursive italic that I ground out and then a noodler's Ahab. So you can see the difference in how the pens are going to write. And I asked him to uh, do some writing samples. And in particular, I talked to my friend Alex because he studied uh, Persian calligraphy back in university. And I'll give him some, you know, that was 20, 25 years ago, he said. So he's a little bit rusty, but I can't do the Arabic characters. He can do them very well and with a little bit of flair. So let's see how that turned out. And what did he say? Which was the best nib for those characters? First writing sample. This one was done using the fine architect nib, the Bobby architect nib. I have a pen fitted with that. Uh, Alex told me that this is a style that he would use if he was going to write a letter to someone. Of course, I don't, I don't know what this says, but it's by a, a writer, a poet named uh, Saadi. So this is like a sonnet, a, a poem. And I guess there's a rhyme and rhythm. He was trying to tell me the structure. Of course, I don't know what, I can't make heads or tails of it, but there's some beautiful detail in there. And uh, someone, when I did this uh, nib, just to kind of show it off, I mentioned that. They said, you should write some Arabic. I'm like, I don't know how, but so th there's someone who actually knows what they're doing. And uh, he told me it represented the characters very well, got the right flair for them as well. Let's see how the other pens did. Here is another poem, another sonnet by the same uh, writer, Saadi, as well. And you can see very different styles. So this was done with the medium cursive italic. And I said, well, that's they're so different. What's up with that? And he says, so this is more of a formal, formal style. So if you were filling out uh, like a government form or something like that, this is how it would look. So I don't know if this is like the equivalent of our printing and the other one was the equivalent of cursive. I'm not 100% sure, but... There you go. He was very pleased with the medium cursive italic. He, he found it was, he kind of chose what he chose um, to get the most out of it. So he said this nib looked really good with like a printing style. So, uh, or at least the formal style, like he, he told me, I still don't know exactly how it works. Um, and was very pleased with how that was as well. And last up is getting fancy with the Noodler's Ahab. Now, uh, this was a style that's a little more uh, kind of calligraphy flair to it. Again, another poem. 
all love poems. He's a romantic. And this one is by uh, someone called Rumi. Okay. Now this one he had a little little trouble with. You could see the uh, bleed through on the other side there, the stiction. I, I told him I heavily modified this nib and it's a very sticky, wet ink. It's a very uh, sheeny ink. It's going to take a while to dry. It was longer than he even thought. So he closed the book and some of it stuck a few smudges there. But um, he did enjoy the Newler's Ahab with the nice flexibility you could have to get some, uh, again, line variation that can be used in any any type of script, any language as well. I was very happy with that. But which one did he say? If you can only pick one nib, which one would do the best job at writing those characters? This guy here, the fine architect nib. So I guess the rumors are true. There was thinner downstrokes and thicker cross strokes. He felt just are better at representing the characters. I'm going to put Alex's information down below as well. Now, uh, writing in fountain pens isn't his forte. He's very brave and actually sings. <laughs> so... If you want to check out his information again, uh, links will be in the description. So thanks to Ron and Alex for showing us some different things you can do with your fountain pens. If you like any of their stuff, check it out as well. And as always, leave some comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And we will catch you next time.